Cray Inc. is an American supercomputer manufacturer headquartered in Seattle, Washington. It also manufactures systems for data storage and analytics. Several Cray supercomputer systems are listed in the TOP500, which ranks the most powerful supercomputers in the world. Cray manufactures its products in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, where its founder, Seymour Cray, was born and raised. The company also has offices in Bloomington, Minnesota, the site of its original headquarters under Seymour Cray, and numerous other sales, service, engineering, and R&D locations around the world. The company's predecessor, Cray Research Inc., Cree, was founded in 1972 by computer designer Seymour Cray. Seymour Cray went on to form the spin-off Cray Computer Corporation CCC, in 1989, which went bankrupt in 1995, while Cray Research was bought by SGI the next year. Cray Inc. was formed in 2000 when Terra Computer Company purchased the Cray Research Inc. business from SGI and adopted the name of its acquisition. Topic company history and timeline Topic Background 1950 to 1972 Seymour Cray began working in the computing field in 1950 when he joined Engineering Research Associates era in St. Paul, Minnesota. There, he helped to create the ERA 1103. ERA eventually became part of UNIVAC, and began to be phased out. He left the company in 1960, a few years after former ERA employees set up Control Data Corporation CDC. He initially worked out of the CDC headquarters in Minneapolis, but grew upset by constant interruptions by managers. He eventually set up a lab at his hometown in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, about 85 miles to the east. Cray had a string of successes at CDC, including the CDC 6600 and CDC 7600. Topic: <coughs> Cray Research Inc and Cray Computer Corporation, 1972 to 1996. When CDC ran into financial difficulties in the late 1960s, development funds for Cray's follow on CDC 8600 became scarce. When he was told the project would have to be put on hold, in 1972, Cray left to form his own company, Cray Research Inc. Copying the previous arrangement, Cray kept the research and development facilities in Chippewa Falls, and put the business headquarters in Minneapolis. The company's first product, the Cray One supercomputer, was a major success because it was significantly faster than all other computers at the time. The first system was sold within a month for $8.8 .8 million. Seymour Cray continued working, this time on the Cray 2, though it only ended up being marginally faster than the Cray XMP, developed by another team at the company. Cray soon left the CEO position to become an independent contractor. He started a new VLSI technology lab for the Cray 2 in Boulder, Colorado, Cray Laboratories, in 1979, which closed in 1982. Undaunted, Cray later headed a similar spin off in 1989, Cray Computer Corporation CCC, in Colorado Springs, where he worked on the Cray 3 project. 
The first attempt at major use of gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide semiconductors in computing. However, the changing political climate collapse of the Warsaw Pact and the end of the Cold War resulted in poor sales prospects. Ultimately, only one Cray-3 was delivered, and a number of follow-on designs were never completed. The company filed for bankruptcy in 1995. CCC's remains then began Cray's final corporation, SRC Computers, Inc. Cray Research continued development along a separate line of computers, originally with lead designer Steve Chen and the Cray XMP. After Chen's departure, the Cray YMP, Cray C90 and Cray T90 were developed on the original Cray 1 architecture but achieved much greater performance via multiple additional processors, faster clocks, and wider vector pipes. The uncertainty of the Cray 2 project gave rise to a number of Cray object code compatible Crayet". Firms, Scientific Computer Systems SCS, American Supercomputer, Supertech, and perhaps one other firm. These firms did not mean to compete against Cray and therefore attempted less expensive, slower CMOS versions of the XMP with the release of the CUS Operating System SCS and the CFT Fortran compiler. They also considered National Labs LANL, LLNL, developed CTSS operating system as well before caving into the tide of Unix's. A series of massively parallel computers from Thinking Machines, Kendall Square Research, Intel Supercomputing Systems Division, N-Cube, Masper and Mako Scientific took over the 1980s high-performance market. At first, Cray Research denigrated such approaches by complaining that developing software to effectively use the machines was difficult, a true complaint in the era of the ILLIACIV, but becoming less so each day. Cray eventually realized that the approach was likely the only way forward and started a five year project to capture the lead in this area. The plan's result was the DEC Alpha based Cray T3D and Cray T3E series, which left Cray as the only remaining supercomputer vendor in the market besides NEC by 2000. Most sites with a Cray installation were considered a member of the exclusive club of Cray operators. Cray computers were considered quite prestigious because Crays were extremely expensive machines, and the number of units sold was small compared to ordinary mainframes. This perception extended to countries as well. To boost the perception of exclusivity, Cray Research's marketing department had promotional neckties made with a mosaic of tiny national flags illustrating the Club of Cray Operating Countries. Computer History Museum, Cray 130th, Anniversary Recorded Presentation, 2006. New vendors introduced small supercomputers, known as mini supercomputers, as opposed to super minis, during the late 1980s and early 1990s, which outcompeted low-end Cray machines in the market. The convex computer series, as well as a number of small-scale parallel machines from companies like Pyramid Technology and Alliant Computer Systems were particularly popular. One such vendor was Supertech, whose S1 machine was an air-cooled CMOS implementation of the XMP processor. 
Cray purchased Supertech in 1990 and sold the S1 as the Cray XMS, but the machine proved problematic. Meanwhile, their not yet completed S2, a YMP clone, was later offered as the Cray YMPL, later becoming the EL90 series, which started to sell in reasonable numbers in 1991-92 to mostly smaller companies, notably in the oil exploration business. This line evolved into the Cray J90 and eventually the Cray SV1 in 1998. In December 1991, Cray purchased some of the assets of Floating Point Systems, another mini-super vendor that had moved into the file server market with its Spark-based Model 500 line. These SMP machines scaled up to 64 processors and ran a modified version of Sun Microsystems Solaris. Cray set up Cray Research Superservers, Inc. later the Business Systems Division to sell this system as the Cray SMP, later replacing it with the Cray CS6400. In spite of these machines being some of the most powerful available when applied to appropriate workloads, Cray was never very successful in this market, possibly due to it being so foreign to their existing market niche. CCC was building the Cray 3, SSS when it went into Chapter 11 in March 1995. Topic: Silicon Graphics, 1996 to 2000. Cray Research merged with Silicon Graphics (SGI) in February 1996. At the time the industry was highly critical of the move, noting that there was little overlap between the two companies, either in markets or technology. Founder Seymour Cray died as a result of a traffic accident later that year. SGI immediately sold off the SuperServers business to Sun, who quickly turned the UltraSpark-based Starfire project then under development into the extremely successful Enterprise 10,000 range of servers. SGI did use a number of Cray technologies in their attempt to move from the graphics workstation market into supercomputing. Key among these was the use of the Cray-developed Hippie Data Bus and details of the interconnects used in the T3 series. SGI's long-term strategy was to merge their high-end server line with Cray's product lines in two phases, code named SN1 and SN2 SN standing for scalable node. The SN1 was intended to replace the T3E and SGI Origin 2000 systems and later became the SN MIPS or SGI Origin 3000 architecture. The SN2 was originally intended to unify all high-end, supercomputer product lines including the T90 into a single architecture. This goal was never achieved before SGI divested itself of the Cray business, and the SN2 name was later associated with the SNEA or SGI Altix 3000 architecture. Under SGI ownership, one new Cray model line, the SV1, was launched in 1998. This was a clustered SMP vector processor architecture, developed from J90 technology. SGI set up a separate Cray research business unit in August 1999 in preparation for detachment. On March 2, 2000, the unit was sold to Terra Computer Company. Terra Computer Company was then renamed Cray Inc. when the deal closed on April 4. Cray Inc. 2001–2005 
2009 After the Terra merger, the Terra MTA system was relaunched as the Cray MTA 2. This was not a commercial success and shipped to only two customers. Cray Inc. also unsuccessfully badged the NEC SX6 supercomputer as the Cray SX6 and acquired exclusive rights to sell the SX6 in the US, Canada and Mexico. In 2002, Cray Inc. announced their first new model, the Cray X1 Combined Architecture Vector, MPP Supercomputer. Previously known as the SV2, the X1 is the end result of the earlier SN2 concept originated during the SGI years. In May 2004, Cray was announced to be one of the partners in the U.S. Department of Energy's fastest computer in the world project to build a 50 teraflops machine for the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Cray was sued in 2002 by Isothermal Systems Research for patent infringement. The suit claimed that Cray used ISR's patented technology in the development of the Cray X1. The lawsuit was settled in 2003. As of November 2004, the Cray X1 had a maximum measured performance of 5.9 teraflops, being the 29th fastest supercomputer in the world. Since then the X1 has been superseded by the X1e, with faster dual-core processors. On October 4, 2004, the company announced the Cray XD1 range of entry-level supercomputers which use dual-core 64-bit AMD Opteron CPUs running Linux. This system was previously known as the Octagabay 12K before Cray's acquisition of that company. The XD1 provided one Xilinx Vertex 2 Pro Field Programmable Gate Array FPGA with each node of four Opteron processors. The FPGAs could be configured to embody various digital hardware designs and could augment the processing or input-output capabilities of the Opteron processors. Furthermore, each FPGA contains a pair of PO RPC 405 processors which can add to the already considerable power of a single node. The Cray XD1, although moderately successful, was eventually discontinued. In 2004, Cray completed the Red Storm system for Sandia National Laboratories. Red Storm was to become the jumping-off point for a string of successful products that eventually revitalized Cray in supercomputing. Red Storm had processors clustered in 96-unit cabinets, a theoretical maximum of 300 cabinets in a machine, and a design speed of 41.5 teraflops. Red Storm also included an innovative new design for network interconnects, which was dubbed C-Star and destined to be the centerpiece of succeeding innovations by Cray. The Cray XT3 massively parallel supercomputer became a commercialized version of Red Storm, similar in many respects to the earlier T3E architecture, but, like the XD1, using AMD Opteron processors. The Cray XT4, introduced in 2006 added support for DDR2 memory, newer dual-core and future quad-core Opteron processors and utilized a second-generation C-Star 2 communication coprocessor. It also included an option for FPGA chips to be plugged directly into processor sockets, unlike the Cray XD1, which required a dedicated socket for the FPGA coprocessor. On August 8, 2005, Peter Ungaro was appointed CEO. 
Ungaro had joined Cray in August 2003 as Vice President of Sales and Marketing and had been made Cray's President in March 2005. On November 13, 2006, Cray announced a new system, the Cray XMT, based on the MTA series of machines. This system combined multi-threaded processors, as used on the original Terra systems, and the C-Star 2 interconnect used by the X-T4. By reusing ASICs, boards, cabinets, and system software used by the comparatively higher volume XT4 product, the cost of making the very specialized MTA system can be reduced. A second generation of the XMT is scheduled for release in 2011, with the first system ordered by the Swiss National Supercomputing Centre (CSCS) in 2006. Cray announced a vision of products dubbed adaptive supercomputing. The first generation of such systems, dubbed the Rainier Project, used a common interconnect network CSTAR2, programming environment, cabinet design, and I.O. subsystem. These systems included the existing X-T4 and the XMT. The second generation, launched as the XT5H, allowed a system to combine compute elements of various types into a common system, sharing infrastructure. The XT5H combined Opteron, Vector, Multithreaded, and FPGA compute processors in a single system. In April 2008, Cray and Intel announced they would collaborate on future supercomputer systems. This partnership produced the Cray CX-1 system, launched in September the same year. This was a desk-side blade server system, comprising up to 16 dual or quad-core Intel Xeon processors, with either Microsoft Windows HPC Server 2008 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux installed. By 2009, the largest computer system Cray had delivered was the XT5 system at National Center for Computational Sciences at Oak Ridge National Laboratories. This system, with over 224,000 processing cores, was dubbed Jaguar and was the fastest computer in the world as measured by the Linpack benchmark at the speed of 1.75 petaflops until being surpassed by the Tianhe 1A in October 2010. It was the first system to exceed a sustained performance of 1 petaflops on a 64-bit scientific application. Topic: <coughs> Cray Inc 2010 to current In May 2010, the Cray XE6 supercomputer was announced. The Cray XE6 system had at its core the new Gemini system interconnect. This new interconnect included a true global address space represented a return to the T3E feature set that had been so successful with Cray Research. This product was a successful follow on the XT3, XT4 and XT5 products. The first multi-cabinet XE6 system was shipped in July 2010. The next generation Cascade systems were designed make use of future multicore and or many-core processors from vendors such as Intel and NVIDIA. Cascade was scheduled to be introduced in early 2013 and designed to use the next generation network chip and follow on to Gemini, code named Ares. In early 2010, Cray also introduced the Cray CX-1000, a rack-mounted system with a choice of compute-based, GPU-based, or SMP-based chassis. The CX-1 and CX-1000 product lines were sold until late 2011. 
In 2011, Cray announced the Cray XK6 hybrid supercomputer. The Cray XK6 system, capable of scaling to 500,000 processors and 50 petaflops of peak performance, combines Cray's Gemini Interconnect, AMD's multi-core scalar processors, and NVIDIA's Tesla GPGPU processors. In October 2012 Cray announced the Cray XK7 which supports the NVIDIA Kepler GPGPU and announced that the ORNL Jaguar system would be upgraded to an XK7 renamed Titan and capable of over 20 petaflops. Titan was the world's fastest supercomputer as measured by the Linpack benchmark until the introduction of the Tianhe 2 in 2013, which is substantially faster. In 2011 Cray also announced it had been awarded the $188 million U.S. Blue Waters contract with the University of Illinois, after IBM had pulled out of the delivery. This system was delivered in 2012 and was the largest system to date, in terms of cabinets and general purpose x86 processors, that Cray had ever delivered. In November 2011, the Cray Sonicion 1300 data storage system was introduced and signaled Cray entry into the high performance storage business. This product used modular technology and a Lustre file system. In 2011, Cray launched the OpenAC Parallel Programming Standard Organization. In April 2012, Cray Inc. announced the sale of its Interconnect hardware development program and related intellectual property to Intel Corporation for $140 million. On November 9, 2012, Cray announced the acquisition of APRO International, Inc., a California based privately held development developer of advanced scalable supercomputing solutions. Currently the number three provider on the top 100 supercomputer list, APRO builds some of the world's most advanced high-performance computing HPC cluster systems. In 2012, Cray opened a subsidiary in China.